My next guest is Pat Robertson, a media mogul, televangelist, writer, Republican presidential candidate, demagogue, promoter of weight loss products, failed prophet, liar, and con man suffering from religious dementia. Robertson underwent a religious conversion in 1955 and became an ordained Southern Baptist minister in 1961. He began his public preaching career by going door to door asking Christians to buy cable boxes so they could receive his public broadcasts of the Christian Broadcasting Network from a small UHF station he purchased in 1977. Robert solicited donations to build his media empire through CBN and public speaking engagements at local churches. Robertson is a homophobe who blames naturally occurring disasters on homosexuals and people who didn't pray to God hard enough. Anyone with a belief different from his is often denounced as satanic and demonic. He is opposed to free choice in matters of religion, abortion, and women's rights, and called for the assassination of Hugo Chavez and the bombing of the State Department for failing to adequately protect America and its citizens from terrorists here and abroad. In 1976, Robertson added his name to the long list of false prophets providing bad intel by declaring the world would end in October or November 1982. In 2006, he received a divine revelation sent by God of storms lashing the coasts of America and a possible tsunami occurring in the Pacific Northwest that never occurred. In 2008, Robertson predicted a year of worldwide violence and an American recession, which had already begun a year earlier, followed by a stock market crash by 2010. Stock markets worldwide have a history of rising and falling, and 2010 was a continuation of what had begun with increasing household debt and the catastrophic collapse of financial institutions, which Roberts did not specify in his warning. In 2008, Roberts speculated that nuclear strikes would occur in the Middle East within two to four months, remaining before the Middle East would spin out of control. In 2009, Roberts heard from God that gold would hit 1900 an ounce and oil would rise to $300 a barrel. The actual price of gold that year was $1,087 and oil dropped to $35 a barrel. In January 2012, Roberts announced on his 700 Club broadcast that God again had spoken to him and expressed, expressly stated that Mitt Romney would win the election and be a two-term president. In 2015, God told Roberts that Ben Carson would win the election, and in 2016, the Saudi kingdom will fall. Despite his failure to understand God's messages, Robertson's own business acumen has been largely successful. According to Wikipedia, his media empire, weight loss, and vitamin supplements and gold and diamond mines have netted him anywhere from $100 million to $1 billion. Because Roberts has registered himself with the IRS as a spokesman for the creator of the universe, he doesn't have to give back any of his enormous wealth in the form of taxes. Our next person of interest is Fulton J. Sheen, a Catholic lecturer and author of 73 books, including his bestseller, Life is Worth Living, Fulton J. Sheen was an American archbishop who used television and radio to promote Catholic doctrine. As a child, I remember listening to Bishop Sheen on the television as my mother watched in iron clothes on Saturday afternoon. At the time, I had no idea what he was talking about, but I sensed the man in the black gown, red sash, purple cape, and wearing a shiny chained cross on his chest was a highly intelligent and sincere man in his beliefs. Sheen grew up Catholic and devoted his life to promoting his beliefs from altar boy to priest to monsignor to philosophy teacher at Catholic University to bishop and archbishop. Sheen's fervent wish was to spread his religion through education and integration into the daily life of Catholics. Bishop Sheen used the Knox Bible as his authority for promoting his personal God of goodness, kindness, love, justice, and compassion along with a dose of tough love for dissenters. The horrific pain and suffering inflicted on mankind by the Old Testament God and the terrifying punishment awaiting heretics, homosexuals, and criminals 
post-mortem was downplayed. Because Sheen was highly intelligent, spoke eloquently, dressed impeccably, and maintained a spotless reputation as a man of compassion throughout his career, he attracted an audience of 30 million, according to one online estimate. In spite of his extraordinary life of service, Fulton Sheen taught me that it is possible to manufacture a fantasy and invest your entire life defending that fantasy until it becomes true for you. With his impressive credentials and commanding presence, Bishop Sheen convinced millions to believe that an invisible entity far beyond the limits of our human knowledge and comprehension had created us and wanted a relationship with us. He was the quintessential televangelist for the Catholic indoctrination program of Sin Against God and Forgiveness Through His Son Jesus. His performance became a prime example of how to cast a spell on a willing audience. The next in line is Jimmy Swaggart. Jimmy Swaggart is a Pentecostal evangelist born with a gift for hosting radio and television broadcasts of, you guessed it, Bible preaching. Because Jimmy also had a gift for writing, singing, piano playing, and pastoring, he was able to attract a following under the Assemblies of God denomination, which promotes baptism, speaking in tongues, divine healing, and the return of Christ. Members believe an invisible creator, composed of three distinct persons of one essence, inspired humans to write an infallible, authoritative, faith-based book called the Holy Bible. According to this translated, copied, and edited collection of Hebrew tribal beliefs, the first humans were created perfect by a creator who cannot make a mistake. According to the fable, the humans went bad because the creator gave them free will, and now they and their children are guilty and must repent of their badness by following the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ the Son of the Creator and Second Person of the Trinity. This is accomplished by a profession of faith and sprinkling or full immersion in water. After that comes baptism in the Holy Spirit, which means you believe the Bible is absolute truth and live it as a witness to others. Finally, at the end of the world called the Rapture, Believers, both alive and dead, will trigger the return of Christ, who will reign for 1,000 years. Afterwards, there will be a final judgment of eternal damnation for the wicked, and a new heaven and new earth for the righteous. Swaggart preached this message to his listeners through radio stations, music recordings, and television under the title, Jimmy Swaggart Ministries. However, in 1986, he reported a fellow minister, Marvin Gordon, for having several affairs which got him kicked out of the club. So in 1988, Gorman and his sons caught Swaggart with Deborah Murphy, a local prostitute outside a hotel room, which was used for prostitution. Swaggart claimed he was being set up, but in 1991, Swaggart was caught again, this time with Rosemary Garcia in his car by a police officer for parking on the wrong side of the road. Garcia later told reporters she was a prostitute and that Swaggart had propositioned her. The first time Swaggart got caught, he repented of his sins, but the second time he refused and left the Assemblies of God to start a new non-denominational group with his loyal supporters. Today, Jimmy Swaggart and his family run the Family work sh Worship Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Swaggart's net wealth is listed at $1.5 million tax-free. Our next crazy guy is Robert Tilton, a non-denominational charismatic pastor, author, and televangelist who preaches the prosperity gospel. Prosperity Gospel teaches that faith, positive speech, and donations will increase one's material wealth and the alleviation of sickness and poverty. This includes repentance and atonement for having sinned against God. If humans reconcile with God, He will deliver security and prosperity. At its peak, Tilton was receiving nearly 80 million tax-free dollars from 
old, sick, and desperate people who believed his lies. Tilton had his conversion experience in 1969 and began preaching in 1974, first to small revivals, then to a small church in Texas. He also started a local television program called Daystar. Tilton next took a trip to Hawaii where he fished, drank, and watched Dave Del Dotto running infomercials on how to get rich flipping real estate. On his return, Tilton secured a $1.3 million loan to begin his famous Success in Life, an hour-long religious infomercial. An infomercial is a television commercial that promotes a product in an informative and supposedly honest manner. Tilton preached that poverty was a result of sin, and sin was a violation of God's will. Sin could also be viewed as any thought or action that endangered the relation between an individual and God, or any diversion from the perceived ideal order for human living. In other words, sin could be anything Tilton said it was. Tilton would ask for donations ranging from $1,000 to $10,000 and promise that God would reward the donors who gave the most with vast material riches. Tilton also included the testimonials from donors who claimed they received miracles from God. Some of Tilton's fundraising letters were written by Gene Ewing, a professional donation letter writer for other televangelists. Tilton's little church in Texas grew into a megachurch with 8,000 members and his books included How to Pay Your Bills Supernaturally, but in 1991 Tilton's fortunes changed when it was revealed that Tilton response mail went to his bank, which threw into a dumpster the prayer requests that came in the mail, without reading them and keeping the money and valuables for deposit and safekeeping. When the scandal was aired on Primetime Live, Tilton denied the allegations and swore he had prayed over the prayer requests and laid on them so much that the ink had seeped into his bloodstream and caused two small strokes in his brain. He also claimed he needed plastic surgery to repair damage from ink that had seeped into his skin from the prayer requests. Tilton's hotline operators were instructed to limit conversations with desperate people to seven minutes and always ask for a $100 minimum donation. According to Tilton's maid, the pastor told her to stash the bags of prayer requests in the garage and then throw them away. The secretary testified she never saw the pastor visit the sick or pray with members of the church. The investigation of Tilton's business practices led to lawsuits, divorce, and decline of Tilton's success in life religious infomercial. Tilton returned to the airwaves in 1994 with a loud shouting exorcism program called Demon Blasting which was canceled by the end of the year. In 1997, Tilton revived his old model of vows of faith instead of exorcisms on BET, which is Black Entertainment Television. Today, Tilton runs Word of Faith World Outreach Center Church, which by estimates is grossing about $24 million per year tax-free.